Golly. Saw that one come up and get it right under the boat. It was small one though. Dude, the way that hit it, it's like a jerk bait bite. Quick, quick pull of jerk bait up. Oh, oh, God, oh, God! God, it was a fucking like four or five pounder. And he just, I, he had him, I had him on like two cranks and he comes off. I, I, oh, God. I mean, how the hell did that just happen? I watched him T-bone it. And it just pulled off. God, that was a big one, man. That's two bites, pretty quick. Oh, there's another one. That's a little, that was a little one that followed it there. That's three bites. Oh, God. Oh, got him. That's a little one now. He hit it and missed it. And... Oh, God. Little male. See that? Look where he's hooked. Mm -hmm. Total opposite of what was happening earlier. Change patterns a little bit, move into the pockets. We're getting a few bites, but they're just slashing at it. And a lot of times that means just the color change. That's a, this is a great bait when that water's clear and you're trying to fish over the grass. It's a shadow wrap shad. And the great thing about this jerk bait as a bait for the warming water. When it's post-spawn and it's warming, the shadow wrap shad is a suspending jerk bait, but it's a slow floater. So it'll, it'll stop on the pause, and then it'll rise, nose up, real slow. And so fishing a suspending jerk bait, when the water's freezing cold, I want a slow sink. When it's moderately cold, I want suspending. But when that water's warming, like what we have here, I want a floating or slow float, and I want it nose up. And that's, that's what that shadow wrap shad does. We may have to switch the color though. Something's a little off, they keep missing it like that. And they're getting too good of a look at it. Water's so clean. That's a big one. I, I don't know, maybe not. No, it's not, it's not. That one got a little better. Another little buck though. Right after females, it came up, switched patterns. And we're starting to get some bites, but they're definitely not the right fish. If you're fun fishing, this is great. If you're a tournament guy, you definitely do not want these little, we call them buck bass, little, little male bass. They're up there guarding the fry or protecting the bed. That one's hooked a lot better, so that gives me a little hope that this color might be right after all. Another one on the shadow wrap shad. And just like I was saying, that fish threw up in that cut and I made some twitches and I paused it. And when I made that pause, I let it sit and about two seconds in as it was rising, that one hit it. And that's, that's where that slow rise is so important, you know? Look at our water temperature. We're hovering a little over 70 degrees. You do not want a suspending jerk bait. You do not want a sinking jerk bait. You want a floating or slow rise jerk bait when that water gets warm. There he goes. Golly. Yeah. Another buck. This solid pattern, but they're just not the right species. Not the right size. They're all the same size. They're all these little males, 12, 13, 14 inch fish. A lot of them, I bet you, you know, are fry garters, or they're ones that are still territorial in their bed. This is fun. It's just not the right ones. These, uh, these little ones. But you know, this is the kind of th deal where, you know, we're getting some bites with a bait. Now we need to figure out how to get the big ones to trigger. So 
you know, shadow wrap shad, that slow float, it's working. We're patterning them, they're actually in these pockets, but they're just not the right fish yet. We'll finish this pocket, but I think our best chance is to get out in those main lake points and just see, see if we can do the same thing on the main lake points. Big one! Oh, no! God! Oh my God! Oh God, I watched him eat it. The f***ing bait disappeared. Yeah, I watched him follow it and I like did the perfect deal where I did that slow rise and he, he ate it. It disappeared. Like what, what else am I supposed to do? You know? Four pounder, bro. I had two good ones, man. We gotta, we gotta, we're gonna figure out how to catch these good ones consistently. They've all been in the backs of these little pockets though, huh? God, I thought I did everything right on that one. Apparently not. Color's apparently not perfect. I should probably, probably put something a little, maybe a little more translucent on. I mean, something's off, because I've missed two or three, right? And a couple of the ones I've caught are hooked on the back hook. I should have reeled it in slower. Oh, God. Another one on that jerk bait. Went and switched to that frostier color. Looks like he's hooked better. Yeah, I mean bulldogging. Finally, another another fish on the jerk. But definitely hooked a lot better. This one's got this one's got three or four hooks in them. I'm always looking at the way these fish are hooked. You know, we start at this jerkbait pattern and we missed several good ones on a foil finish really bright flashy color and when you miss a few step back you know you're close but you're a little off and and what I like to do is switch colors and if you look at this one we went to a frosted color uh, it's still that uh, shadow wrap shad by Rapala slow float nose up but it's really muted down more subtle colors and a lot of times that's the difference between catching them and missing them. Um, that's, a, that's a decent one, getting a little better. You know, again, the other thing on this pattern, it's so key, is having wind, you know, on this jerkbait. If you look at this bank, we went and had a nice big dry spell with the jerkbait. We couldn't find wind. We, get, we find another bank that's got some wind blowing on it, and we instantly catch one. So maybe that's the deal, hopefully. A oh, big one! Big one, big one, big one, big one! No, no, it's a good one though. Good one. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. Every time you think you're not doing the right thing, they keep you coming. That's a good one. That's a good one, man. Please stay on there. Ah! Ah! It's like a third bite in a very small area. Good fish. God, that's a good fish. That's eating real good too. That's, that's why we talk about that color change. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. And that's all the way you want to see him eat that jerk bait. To the side like that. Once again, I want to, it sound like a broken record, but 
that fish absolutely smoked it on the paws. Um, and the unique thing, it's a shadow wrap shad, we went to a more muted color. When you twitch that bait and you stop it and pause it, it kicks nose up and floats up real slow. That's the trigger to making these fish bite. That's a good one. It's a nice bass. Post spawn fish, got a sore on his back. Post spawn male, that's a good one. You know, we got on a little pattern this afternoon and we're fishing a jerk bait. We're fishing basically windy banks and we're fishing a shadow wrap shad. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the rod, the reel, and the line, and especially the rod. You know, when you're fishing a jerk bait, jerk bait essentially is a twitch style bait, like a topwater walking bait, like a popper. Jerk baits are twitch style baits, and the rod selection for me on this bait is so important. I just want to show you, I'm going to make a long cast here, and you reel that bait down, and it's all about cadence. It's all about these short twitches that I'm making with the bait, followed by long pauses. And because of that, the rod butt length is really critical. You know, you don't want to pick a rod with a really long butt, right? Like you would for a crankbait or flipping. You want a rod with a short butt section. You know, this is a rod I designed for Abu Garcia. It's an Ike series rod. And I designed this especially for twitching baits, like jerk baits. It's six four, but with a really short butt. You know, just like the crankbait rod, it's also a composite rod. So it's got a very soft tip. That's gonna let you load that little bait, cast it a mile. And that soft tip, once again, is gonna add a little delay for when they hit it. And when they're thrashing around with those trebles, it's gonna let you land the fish. So shorter rod, shorter butt. On the reel, I like an Abu Garcia Premier. And once again, just like the crankbait reel, it's six, four to one. Gives me a little bit more control and power of the bait. And then finally is the line. For slow floating, slow rising, or suspending jerk baits, fluorocarbon is at its best. It'll let that bait get down and it will actually slow the rise of the bait. And in these tough post-spawn conditions, that slow rise, nose up, shadow wrap shad, that fluorocarbon's key. So 10 to 12 pound Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon. If you like the jerk baiting technique like I do, think about that rod, that shorter butt. Think about that line and that reel, and you're gonna be able to work the bait a lot better. There you go. Little, 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 little. I think it's a jerk bait. Got a good one. There he goes. Yeah, looks like a spot. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. A little black. Always a fish around a bridge piling. Always a fish around a bridge finally. Look at him eating shad. Crazy. That little belly. Always fish around a bridge finally. Anywhere you go. City, country, it doesn't matter how deep they are. Bridge piling could be 100 feet deep and they'll still be around it, be suspended around it. There's a big one. Yeah. I think. That's the second bite I just had. Second. Stay, stay. No, it ain't either. I thought that was a big one. That's a spot. Look at that thing. Wow. That's what it is, it's a spot. That was my other bite I had too, because I can tell he hit so far out. And he hit like a big one. What the heck? Yeah, 
There you go. Another spot. A lot of spots is what all this is. You can tell because they're suspended. They're uh, they're hitting like at the very end of the cat or the the end, you know, the back side of the cast. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed today's vlog from Tackle Warehouse. As always, the gear and product you saw me catch all those fish on, you can get it at Tackle Warehouse. And I want you to like, share, and tag one of your buddies for a chance to win a ton of great prizes. Keep your eye out for another vlog coming up soon.